Joining Quite us right now to talk about both trade policy, the future of the Iran deal, and much more is former U.S. Senator Judd Gregg. And, Senator, thanks for being here today. Thank you, Becky. Thank you for having me. Where do you want to start? Uh, Iranian, Iranian deal? Or I, the trade I want to start with a. There was a segment earlier where they were talking about the taxes on the new princess who's from the United States. We should start there because I have daughters, and when they were seven years old, the first thing I told them was, don't marry a prince, your taxes are going to be too high, right? <laughs> Isn't that what you told your daughter? Don't uh, kiss any frogs. So romantic. <laughs> Don't kiss any frogs. Yes. Right. I think the, uh, the big issue, of course, is trade, clearly. And it's not clear what's happening. It's sort of a Chinese fire drill from our side. We've, we're sending four people to China, two of whom are free traders, two of whom are protectionists, to, to use very broad brush terms. And I don't see a coherent policy being even presented to the Chinese by that trade group. Huh. Uh, if you really want to go after the Chinese, we should re-engage on TPP. I mean, the whole purpose of TPP was to isolate China. And uh, you've got TPP. Although the TPP nations have kind of made it clear at this point. We just had uh, the Australian foreign minister here last week. He said, look, we're moving on. We're not going to renegotiate all of this. Well, but we should re-engage with it. Uh, and in fact, TPP is bringing in some uh, South American countries, potentially, mm -hmm. into the process. And, and so that's one way to isolate China. Another thing to do is get the debt down, because Compared to our trade deficit, our interest deficit, if you want to use it another term, where we're paying China interest on our debt is, is equally uh, threatening to our capacity to be competitive. So uh, I, I just don't sense that this administration has a, uh, a single policy yet on how they're going to deal with China and, uh, or how they're going to deal with, uh, with our allies like Europe. Uh, especially Kayla, in the steel and uh, aluminum area. Uh, Kayla hinted earlier that if these tariffs go through, um, if, if they're really pushed on the Chinese in particular, that China will start looking for other pain points, other ways to make us feel it. It's interesting because people have talked about, oh, are they going to start selling our debt? Maybe your idea is they hold on to it and just wait to get paid more and more <laughs> in interest rates as they go up. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll have an opportunity to buy a lot more because we're running it up at an astronomical rate. We're going to have a trillion dollar deficit beginning next year. Our debt to GDP ratio is headed towards 100 percent. And somebody's going to have to finance it for us because we don't have it internally. To, we can't do it internally. And so the Chinese will have a chance to buy a lot of debt. And interest rates are going up. I think there's no question, but there's inflationary pressures brought in part by the steel and, and aluminum tariffs in the economy right now. Uh, Judd, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you left Congress, when you left the Senate, it was in part because you were a little frustrated that there didn't seem like there was a bipartisan way of working across the aisle and finding a common middle ground. Um, it has not improved since you left. It's deteriorated dramatically. So what now? What does that leave you thinking just in terms of all these issues you just laid out about what needs to get done? How, how do we get to a point where we do, do uh, tackle things like entitlements, tackle things like our growing debt? Well, we came very close under Simpson-Bowles. I mean, that was an agreement which was reached in a bipartisan way. Uh, but that's history now. Seems uh, like ancient yeah. history. Yeah, yeah, it is ancient history, but it was the right format to do it. I mean, right. if the Congress wants to get back into dealing with the debt, they're going to have to structure some sort of mechanism where they bring the parties together. Because you can't do it in a partisan way. These issues are far too big. Things like Medicare, Social Security, and tax reform, very hard to address them in a, in a partisan way. People don't have confidence in the outcome. But you had to do them together, and now you've already done the tax piece on one side. Well, you've only done it on the corporate side. I mean, the individual tax policies under tax reform were really pretty anemic. But I if you look, for example, I don't know if you saw, Marco Rubio came out yesterday, said that, said that he the, said it said the corporate o overwhelmingly was too much. No, no, but he said uh, we haven't seen it go into workers' pockets overwhelmingly. Right. But it's, it's, a, it's April. I mean, or it's and, May. But then also made the right. argument that they went too far. No, but he was also making well, he made, that they went, the argument, said that before. He said that before. He said that before. The they, corporations. That, yeah. that the corporate tax rate had, had gone, had had become too low. Yeah, he threatened to not vote for it. Meaning but. that you then have to, if, if you were to really do it as a Simpson-Bowles thing, you have to probably take it from all sides. Well, uh, Simpson-Bowles actually took two-thirds of the savings on deficit from spending and one, uh, I mean, three-fourths right. from spending and one-fourth from revenues. But it did it by actually getting the rates, the individual rate, down to 25%. It was a bill I wrote uh, with Ron Wyden. Uh, and you can do that by eliminating more deductions and exemptions. The tax law is very movable. And I happen to think what they did on the corporate side was excellent. Uh, but I think it's the right approach. I think you ha it hasn't kicked in yet completely. No. Right. And, you know, the idea that it's going to immediately flow through uh, to individuals is, I think, uh, 
bit optimistic. What's going to happen here is that you're going to see a massive repatriation of money. In fact, I guess Apple today is Apple will hear after the bell, and there are people right. wondering if you're going to see a much bigger buyback as a result. Two, three. Well, a buyback is very positive yeah. for, for, for individuals. I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. But I two mean, point, yeah. Jed, we did 2.3% in the first quarter for GDP. That's, high, that's like double the recent first quarters, and that portends really good things for the rest of the year. So if we do end up averaging 3% for the year, you might not attribute it all to, to the corporate tax rate, but some of, some of it is from that. A, a very significant amount. My concern, quite honestly, is that this, this trade action by this administration is going to very much dampen our rate of growth. You're already seeing significant inflation pressure on a com commodity side. A lot of businesses which have to use steel and aluminum are seeing their prices jump and spike considerably, uh, and you're seeing that in other commodities. And plus the Fed, because of these inflationary pressures, is going to continue to raise rates. Yep. There's no question about that. So that, that's going to retard, I think, the rate of growth uh, as we head towards Although the Although we haven't, you know, the, we were supposed to put some tariffs in yesterday. And again, we got a month delay for, for the important trading partners. It, it, we'll see. And, and it's, I've, I've seen the, the negotiating, I think it was it Jonathan Swan, or said, I think, wrote, uh, you know, Trump's got one strategy, one trick pony. You, you <laughs> say in crazy stuff, uh, about, about things. You put it out there, then that sets up a negotiation, and by the end of it, it's like pretty conventional stuff well, that, happens, and then you, you get where you want to be. And, and that's, you know, that may again be, be where we are now. That's why I called it a Chinese fire drill. They, they go out one door and they come in the other door. I don't know whether that's I mean, PC anymore, dude. Yeah, I don't, I'm it's, not. Uh, it's totally confusing as to where they actually physically are in this exercise, other than the fact that Trump is myopic about the issue of trade. Any he doesn't have to Mexican stand up. None of that works anymore, views. Judd. I'm just telling you, it doesn't. Uh, none of those. Uh, you know, none of those. Just leave out any nationality when you're trying. Try to just describe oh, the thing. That, yeah, <laughs> try to describe that. Andrew. Um, yes, I sir. That. I yes, that sir. I loved, I loved your your column. Uh, but you you wrote a column. You wrote a column now Monday and Tuesday, or you wrote one one today. Which one today? I saw column, Today's Tuesday. He writes well, Who Monday wrote this Tuesday. one? Who, who wrote, that was yesterday in what the- What are you uh, talking about? That, I'm sorry, that was, did you see this one yesterday? Did, did, you, did you see that? Look at this quote, you gotta, you, you gotta read this, By the this way, column. I'm serious, the, the New York Times not put this up. Put it's not the, my column. No, I, I, but I was confused. I thought you were writing one on Monday and Tuesday, but he actually said this, we're destined to keep citing him and testing his ideas until the kind of society that he struggled to bring about and that many of us now desire is finally realized that was in the, now how are we going to, was this Bernie Barker, Sanders? Not Andrew Ross, by who? Written by Jason Barker, oh, not Andrew Ross Sorkin. Uh, I, I, but how, did you have any input in accepting that, that op-ed piece? Uh, I had no, no input, I no knowledge. No, do you I, even know Do you there? know anyone at the New York Times that, 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 that he's 200 years old, he'd be 200 years old, Karl Marx, not, not Groucho Marx. Somebody Karl, should wish the guy a happy birthday. Somebody, <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I put one other thing up, just, just for Jason to see. Here's the one other thing that I, that I found. There you have it, 100 uh, years of communism, 100 million. D D yeah. Judd, who still thinks that that might be the, and, and it is interesting though, Andrew, and I'll tell you why it's interesting. Um, what the guy's talking about is that workers are gonna be displaced increasingly by all the stuff that capitalism is bringing us now. And he sort of, you know, I read it and I was like, I'm not saying he made sense, but I can see how if you were open to that sort of thinking that you would blame capitalism for a lot of the stuff that's happening right because now. Because we're in the terms new horses of, from the horse and buggy whips. And actually, if you kill 100 million people, you're, you're definitely more jobs for you anyone that's still around. That, though, uh, what's that? You know? You'd think we'd learn from We didn't. That, Adam Smith, 17, work. no. But you now have within some members of our society. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Did you like that? I, that way? I prepared that for you. It was a you. setup. I didn't I know you were preparing to do this. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> Your piece is on T-Mobile. <laughs> Sprint. Um, yeah, I wrote Sprint. about T-Mobile Sprint. You wrote side, about T-Mobile. And I was very proud of it. I saw it. that. Put on no, the cover of the I section, saw it on, a whole big thing. I swear, I, I, saw, I, saw it on, I saw it on Twitter, and I thought it was, uh, it's Tuesday. It's, uh, and I thought it was, no. Um, yeah. Karl Marx. Okay. Well, well I think happy made, birthday, I, Carl. You know, there is, there is however, the, this is a very serious issue, the fact that we are seeing this lurch to the left. I know, it is. Within, but, our, but, within but, our country, but you look at Mexico today. And they're about to elect, it looks like, or potentially elect, a, an extreme populist who is very far left. And if he were to become the president of Mexico, Orbitan, basically we're, 
we're going to not be able to communicate with Mexico. Yeah, it isn't like the United States, but you know, some of them feel that way about our recent political elections. Too. Well, uh, absolutely. Populism is on the right. rise everywhere. But Populism but is on the rise. People who feel like they have not had a voice but, in a long time. And, and that's why people are voting for folks like Bernie Sanders. Uh, yeah. There's, yeah. Judd, there's absolutely. a Reuters poll out today that I saw that millennials saying they're definitely voting for Democrats was down nine points. And then it was yeah. talking about some of the guys that, that were there that had voted, uh, uh, individuals they interviewed that said, you know, I'm seeing some of the things Republicans are doing. They don't like a lot of the social stuff, obviously, and a lot of them don't like Trump, but they're saying they're open to not, and it, the, the thrust of the piece was it doesn't necessarily mean you can count on the millennials in November. Well, if you're going to be honest about it, what's happened in the Democratic Party, and you see it in the Senate now, is that they've essentially jumped the tracks. You know, we, we've got a party that has some very significant issues, and the president obviously is fairly erratic, but the Democratic Party has, has basically moved away from a market economy approach towards our nation and our nation's economic health and into an attitude of socialism really does work. Well, if you do it right, yeah. If you look at that piece you just read, 100 million people died, but you don't even have to go that far. Look at all the countries. Look at Venezuela. Venezuela, Cuba. I mean, yeah. but don't you look, at, but don't you look at even the election of Trump as just a, there's a, there's a sense of populism Absolutely. across the board. And that's what this it's, is. It's that, populism but that's, on the right and there's populism, populism on, on, the, right. on, on the left. And, and I'm, but the populism, but I'm not sure people are buying into either, either, either flavor of, of a, 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 a socialist version or some kind of capitalistic version. I think they're buying into, we don't like the current way it's being done. We don't like the people. elites. We don't like the way this is. And yeah. we're, we're just trying anything else. I, I agree with that, except that in the Republican populist movement, it's not about an ideological shift that takes us away from the basic form of government governance, which we've had, which is a market economy. In the Democratic form of populism, you're seeing Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders take that party off the tracks of market economy onto the tracks of a, of a much more socialist approach towards governance, which, in my opinion, uh, Makes, takes them out of the mainstream. American politics is played between the 40-yard lines, and they're going way off the 40-yard yeah. lines. Did you see that piece yesterday in the New York Times? Did you, did you hear about it or know about it yesterday? You know, I try to read the New York Times very but thoroughly, but I was so uh, on focused on T-Mobile You, you know who was going off on it? James Woods, our friend who is like oh, my that's favorite. Where you saw uh, it? That's one of the places yeah. I saw it, but one of our, our favorite. Uh, you know, I, I follow James on Twitter. He's he's great. Love the guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Learn a lot. But this really was a piece, and I'm wondering. Okay, so you, you it's basically. It's not a piece, it's not a piece in the newspaper. Right. Though, right? They took it, someone sends it in, yeah. and you're a guest op, and they right. figure, let's put this in there just to, to just highlight all that, the different viewpoints. That's not somebody that's it irritated so it, irritated. it It really it irritated me. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Greg, thank you for thank joining you. us. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.